4.6 focuses on dividing using the area model. A lot of you favored the area model when we were multiplying, and we can also use the same area model to divide. Let's take a look at a problem. This problem is 68 divided by 4. Now, just like when we used our area model for multiplication, we're going to start by drawing our rectangle. Now, in multiplication, what we did was we placed our factors on either side of our rectangle. When we're doing division, we only have one factor, if we put it as a multiplication problem, to place, and that would be our divisor. So our divisor is going to go on the side of our rectangle. Now, the middle of our rectangle, which would be our product in multiplication, would represent all of our partial products added together. In this case, that represents our dividend, our total amount. Now what we want to do is we want to take our 4 and we want to split 68 up evenly. In order to do that, we can think about some multiplication facts that we can start to chip away at 68. So we're going to go piece by piece and take pieces away from 68 until there's nothing left. So this is how we're going to do that. We're going to place our dividend off to the side. And now we need to think about some multiplication. A good place to start is at with our tens facts. So I'm going to place a 10 on the top of my rectangle, and I'm going to separate my rectangle. And then I'm going to multiply. This looks like the area model we're used to. So 4 times 10 gives me 40. I'm going to take this product, and I'm going to subtract it from my whole. My 68 represents my whole. So I'm going to take that piece and subtract it from my whole. This leaves me with 28. Now what I need to do is think, does 4 times anything that I know give me 28? Well, I know that 4 times 5 gives me 20. Maybe I don't know what gives me 48. So I'm going to start with 5. The great thing about using the area model to divide or next we're going to start using distributive property or partial products, is that we don't have to get an exact answer right away. We can take piece and piece and piece away from our dividend until we're left with nothing or something smaller than our divisor. So maybe I don't know what four times what, what factor I can multiply four times to give me 28, but I do know that four times five gives me less than that and 4 times 5 gives me 20. So now I'm going to go back to what I have left of my total, and I'm going to subtract that piece I just added to my area model. And now I'm left with 8. 4 times what gives me 8? 4 times 2 gives me 8. What's inside of my rectangle, my 40, my 20, and my 8, should all add up to my total. My 68 represents my total. 40 plus 20 is 60, plus 8 more gives me my total of 68. Now in order to find my quotient, or my answer to this division problem, what I'm going to do is add up all of these factors on top. That's going to give me my answer. So I would add 10 plus 5 plus 2. 10 plus 5 is 15, plus 2 more gives me 17. So that's my quotient. And that's it. That's how we use the area model to divide. Now, if we want to check our work, we can always check division with multiplication. We could use the area model to check, of course, but we could also use regrouping or another strategy that works well for us. So we could take our 17 and multiply it times 4. 7 times 4 gives me 28. I carry my 2. 4 times 1 gives me 4, plus 2 more gives me 6. Hey, look at that, 68 of my total is my total here, or my dividend in my division problem. That's how I would check my work using multiplication. All right, let's take a look at another problem using the area model. Again, the first thing I'm going to do is draw my rectangle, and I'm going to place my divisor on the side. That represents one of my factors in my multiplication problem. Now what I need to do is figure out what other factors are going to go up top a good place to always start as long as my dividend is at least 10 times larger than my divisor is multiplying times 10. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my 10 up here and I'm going to multiply times 10. 2 times 10 gives me 20. 
I have to take my whole of 32 or my total and subtract that piece that I just took away from it. So 32 minus 20 gives me 12. And that's what I have left to divide into. So how many times does 12 split evenly into two pieces? Or two times what gives me 12? Two times six gives me 12. Now, in order to check my work and make sure that I do have my total, again, I need to subtract my parts and get down to zero, but then I could add up what's in the middle of my rectangle. So 20 plus 12 does give me 32, which is what I should have gotten because that's my whole, my total. In order to get the answer to my division problem, I'm gonna add up my factors on the top. 10 plus six gives me 16. So 32 divided by two gives me 16. That's how I use my area model. All right, I want you to give this next problem a shot. It's a much larger problem, but all the steps same still apply. We're gonna draw our rectangle, our factor of six or our divisor is gonna go off to the side, and now we need to start taking away pieces from 100 86. Now, you don't have to start with 10. You could jump to something larger if you know a larger fact that would get you closer to 186. We just can't go over. Go ahead and give this one a shot. All right, if I was solving this problem, what I would do is maybe instead of multiplying 6 times 10, which is only going to give me 60, and 186 is a little bit larger than that, I might start with 6 times 20. I know that fact, that's something that I can solve pretty easily. I'm gonna put my total off to the side so that I can subtract away the pieces that I'm pulling from my area model. Six times 20 gives me 120. So I'm gonna subtract 120 from my total of 186, and I'm left with 66. Maybe that's a fact that I know, maybe not. If that's not something that I know, I would go with something that I do know. I know that six times 10 gives me something less than 66, so that's what I'm gonna do. Six times 10 would give me 60. I would subtract 60 from what I have left, and I'd be left with six. And then I know that six times one gives me six. And I'd subtract six, and I'd be left with zero, which is what I'm looking for. In order to find my quotient, or my answer to this problem, I'm gonna add all of my factors together. Two plus 10 plus one would give me 31. I could check my work with multiplication. I also wanna check to make sure that everything in the middle adds up to 186. 120 plus 60 gives me 180, plus six more gives me 186, which is my total. And then of course I can check with multiplication. But my answer is 31. This next problem, give this one a shot. 189 divided by nine. Set up your area model, draw your rectangle, put your divisor on the side, and then you're gonna split your rectangle into pieces. Chip away at that 189 until there's nothing left. For this problem, I'm gonna start with nine times 20. I know that nine times 10 just gives me 90, and that would still give me a ways to go. So I wanna multiply nine times 20 to get, take a bigger chunk out of 189. Nine times 20, if I had that inside of my box, I would cross my zero out, place it down, nine times two gives me 18. I would subtract 180 from my 189, and I'd be left with nine. That's a really easy fact. Nine times one gives me nine. I'm gonna subtract that piece from what I have left, and I'm left with zero. In order to get my quotient, all I'm gonna do is add those pieces up, and I get 21. Let's say, though, that you didn't start off with 20, you started off with 10. I wanna show you that we'd still get the same answer. So I put my 10 up here, Nine times 10 gives me 90. I'd break my rectangle, I'd take my 189 and subtract 90. That would give me 99. I would then multiply nine times 10 again, which would give me 90. So I'd subtract 90 
and I'd be left with 9. And then I'd subtract, I'd multiply 9 times 1, which would give me 9. I'd subtract my 9, and I'd be left with 0 down in there at the bottom that's kind of squished. I would take my 10 plus 10 plus 1, and that would give me 21. So it doesn't matter how we're breaking our problem up, we're still going to get the same quotient. Next problem, go ahead and use your area model to solve 225 divided by 5. I'm going to take my rectangle, and I'm going to put my 5 off to the side. And I'm going to take my 225 and also put that off to the side. And now I'm going to think about multiplication. I could multiply 9 times 10, that'd give me 50. 9 times 20 would give me 100. Maybe I want to go even higher. I could do 9 times 30, that would give me 150. Then I'm going to subtract 150 from my total. And I'd be left with 75. I'm going to go to 5 times 10 next. 5 times 10 gives me 50. I'd subtract 50 from 75, and I'd be left with 25. And then I know that 5 times 5 gives me 25, so I'd subtract my 25 and be left with 0. All I need to do to get my quotient is add all of my numbers on top up. 30 plus 10 plus 5 gives me 45 as my quotient. And again, I can always check my work with multiplication. Alrighty. Let's take a look at a word problem. At a football game, the popcorn vendor sold 240 bags of popcorn in four hours. How many bags of popcorn were sold each hour? I want you to go ahead and set up your problem and solve it using your area model for division. I would write this problem as 240 divided by 4, and then I'd set up my area model to solve this problem. So I'd have my 4, my divisor, off to the side. Then I would have my 240, my total, so that I can chip away my pieces that I'm taking away from it. I would start, let's see, I could do 4 times 10, that'd give me 40. 4 times 20 would give me 80. 4 times 30 would give me 120. 4 times 40 would give me 160. 4 times 50 would give me 200. That's a good place to start. So I'm going to take 50 away. 4 times 50 gives me 200. That gives me a really big chunk out of this number. I subtract, and I'm left with 40. How can I get 40 when I have 4 as a number? Well, 4 times 10 would give me 40. So I'm going to subtract my 40, and I'd be left with 0. In order for me to get my quotient, I'm going to add my top pieces up. 50 plus 10 gives me a total of 60. So my question is asking me how many bags of popcorn were sold each hour. 60 bags each hour. And that would be the answer to this problem. All right, let's take a look at one last problem. Julie sold 355 boxes of Girl Scout cookies in five weeks. How many boxes did she sell each week? Go ahead and set up your problem and solve using your area model for a division. To set this problem up, we'd have 355 divided by 5. I'd draw my rectangle, place my 5 on one side, and then I'd take my 355 and place it off to the side. That's my total, and I'm going to have to take pieces away from that total. I want to get close to 355, so I have less work to do. So I'm going to look for my compatible numbers. I'm going to underline my place values, my two greatest place values, and think, does 5 go into 35 evenly? It does. So 5 goes into 350 evenly. 5 times what gives me 350? 5 times what gives me 35? That would be 7 and I'd add my 0. So 5 times 70 gives me 350. I'm going to take that 350 away, and I'd be left with 5. Now 5 times 1 gives me 5. Subtract my 5, and I'm left with 0. Now all I have to do is add up 70 plus 1. That gives me 71, and that would be my answer. If you didn't think of 70, that's okay. You might have gone 5 times 10, 5 times 10, 5 times 10, 5 times 10, and subtracted 50 at a time. That's okay. 
you would have still gotten 71 as your quotient. All right, so our answer, we need, still need to answer it. It says how many boxes did she sell each week? She sold 71 boxes each week. So the great thing about using the area model for division is that we don't always have to get super close to our total at once. We can take piece by piece away. We can use facts that we don't know in order to be successful at division. That's our lesson for today. Tomorrow, we're going to take a look at using the distributive property to do some division. See you then.